You already know. Hey, triple, triple. Can you tell me what you can see? I haven't ate in three days, Jose. Over here eating with my boy Eric. We're here eating the best fucking food ever. Shit. Shit, the best mariscos in LA, baby. Toast to Life podcast, man. The most authentic, most organic podcast out here. Let's go. I want to give everybody a shout out for tuning in with us every single Monday, trying to not just heal yourself, but again, this is a healing for us, and we're able to share people's stories. And today we have one of the most, I want to say, this was amazing, Marie, because we already, we already ate, as you guys seen in the previous video. But the owner, how do you say this? Because... Eric, the owner of Mariscos Cuatro Vientos, is here with us. So let's give that round of applause real quick. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me. Because it takes, a, how we're saying off the camera, it takes a lot just not just to have one, one opening, one store, but to have multiple. And to be grinding daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, to have a successful business the way you guys are having it. So I appreciate you taking the time, sitting with us, sitting with me, to share now what it, who is the behind the scenes of Mariscos Cuatro Vientos? So I appreciate you, man. No, thank you. Thank you for the invite. And thank you, everybody that's here that's, you know, helping this come together. Yeah. So let, give us a background, man. Where where were you born? Where were you raised? So it all starts back in, like, 89 when my dad comes to the U.S. and stuff from San Juan de Lagos, Jalisco, to chase that American dream. And then he started as a forklift driver here in Modesto. And that's when he moved down here with my grandpa to LA, and that's when he started selling mariscos in the carreta, right there in the Winewood Apartments on Olympic. I feel like that's that's engraved in your in your head, in your mind, where it started, where your dad originated from. So right away, let's get into this. What does that mean to you that your dad started this this amazing business, this amazing food uh, restaurant years ago? Because you said in 1989. So what does that mean to you? My dad's, it means a lot because my dad's someone that I look up to. I don't think I look up to anyone else more than my dad. Because he started working in Mexico at 7 selling candies. And then he used to tell me, like, I bought my first huaraches when I was 10. I bought my first scooter when I was 12. And then watching what he, what he made, yeah. coming from that, it's just like, how could you not want to do more? How could you not want to make that guy proud? You know, so, so like, do you have like a certain type of? Is there a certain pressure because your dad was grinding such at a, at a young age, and for to blow people's mind, you're 25 years old, you're the front facing of Marisos Cuatro Vientos, not just a business that's successful, but also a social media influence of showing the success of the business. So at 25 years old, the mentality to have, hey, I'm gonna grind it out because of my dad. How did like how does that work? Like what is your men, like your process? The mentality grew probably when I took over. When they told me here are the keys, it's your turn. Now let's see what you could do. Let's see this past three years, four years what you've been doing. Let's see if it was really like worth there. Let's see what you got. Yeah. You know, if not, then just move out of the way. That was kind of what it came down to, you know? Oh shit. So I was all like, I don't know, no one's gonna tell me what to do. No one's like, gonna show me. You didn't have no other like aspiration or no other dream besides the mariscos? When I, when I was in school still, when I wasn't working, um, I wanted to be a cop. That was my dream, a detective. I always liked the way they look in suits, a badge, a gun, like, damn, that shit was yeah. cool, you know? So that was the, the, the dream. But then when I started working at 15 and I made my first paycheck, I got my tips being a waiter, I was all like, I'm, I'm in high school, I'm making my good money. I'm like, I love this shit. So right. I want to work more. I learned how to do the cashier. I learned how to prep. And then I want to do the kitchen. So then I learned how to do all the kitchen and then little by little learning everything. And then it got me to where I'm at now. Man, so you started this 1920, right? Like you got the, the keys to, to the whole thing in 1920? probably like seven years ago. Seven years ago, okay. So still. I had just graduated high school. It was, 20, it was a year after I graduated high see, school. See, but the mentality that a lot of people, it passes through people's head is that at that age, at that age, instead of just going out to party, going on trips, you know, I'm not, I'm sure you, you still enjoyed your life. But the mentality to have, like, I'm going to take over a business, not just any business, but my family business. 
like there's pressure that a lot of people don't understand that, you know, you're saying right now, the mentality that you had to set on was, I love this. I love getting up every day and going to the restaurant and showing people what this is about. Were you always as motivated as you are now? I think I, I think for me it was more along the way as the accomplishments came and the rewards, and it was like, damn, now I want more. What was more. what was the first accomplishment or reward that you got that was not money? That was not money. That was not money. Could it be a reaction? Like when, yeah. I mean, it has to do with money, though. I bought my mom her house when I was 21 after we lived in the ghetto for 15 years. Come on, bro. <laughs> yeah. what, me giving her the key. And he, I, so that day when... when Take my, us through it. My guy called me. He's like, all right. He's like, the house is yours. I'm like, you're lying. He's like, it's yours. And we had been struggling for like a year trying to get a house. My mom even gave up on the dream of getting a house. She's like, it's cool. Like, we'll just stay here. Like, we don't have to go anywhere. Yeah. And I told my guy, I don't care what you have to do, but you're going to get me that house. So and he went to the restaurant, he took me the key, I went to CVS, I bought a Hallmark card, and I put, here's your house. I put the key, I bought her 100 roses, I bought her a Don Julio bottle, and I went to the restaurant, I just gave her everything. And then she was just tripping out, and she opened up the card, and the key just fell out. And she stared at the key for like 10 seconds, and she looked at me and started crying. So that to me is like, nothing could top that. What did, as a son, what did that do to you? It made me want to just make all her dreams, my sister's dreams, and my dreams come true even more. Like, keep it, 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 it can be like um, fuel to damn. Like, if I could do this, I, I know I could do way more. You know, that that transitions into the love that you have for your parents. We talked about this this week, where we don't always stay motivated, right? Like, that's one thing about life that people try to perceive perceive that hey you know what every day we wake up motivated we're ready to grind like that not you always be stressed no sleep <laughs> and just finding that little strength to like you yeah. know what i'm gonna i have to get up i it's it's to the bed it's your responsibility you know mm-hmm. if you don't do it who's gonna do it you know we Gosh. all have the same 24 hours in the day yeah i have homies that just oh i'm chilling what are you doing tomorrow chilling what are you doing next day like, chilling like bro <laughs> yeah like, do Let, something you know and that's the thing and then when you can't complain about where you're at in life when you're not putting in that work, right? Exactly. So that's where everything comes into into factor. When we're working for something bigger, a bigger purpose, handing our mom her house that she probably never thought she would ever get it in, in life, and you're able to do that at such a young age. When at 21, an, an average 21-year-old is just, where are we going to go to Rosarito? When? Where are we going to go party? Hey, what's today? When are we going to celebrate this person's birthday? But our mentality is... What I got to do now, so in six months from now, I can hand something over to my family. Yeah, all that parents. work, all that work, all those six months of work, like, what, what was going to come out of it? If not, then what was the whole point of working your ass off that long just to stay in the same spot? I mean, yeah. that's not the point. The point is to keep moving, you know? So, yeah. Uh, just to blow everybody's mind right now, I'm at, off, the, off the rip, what makes Marisos Cuatro Vientos so special? It's the food, the, the quality, the food. Um, I try to keep everything the same, you know. People say it changes and stuff, but I think I, I'm just starting to think that people's taste buds change because people tell me, "Oh, the food, the food changed," and then other people tell me it's been the same for 20 years. So, like, you know, okay, what but, side do I, yeah. do I? But it's more of it's the same that it's it's changed, you know. Do you listen to your audience and to your consumer, or do you have a certain team or to yourself that you pay attention to more? I listen to everybody. Every day, I read all the comments, all the reviews, all the feedback. And if it's something I see that I could fix or it was our our mistake, then I'll reach out. Hey, you know what? Um, I don't like how that happened. You want to yeah. come back? You want to talk about it? Or, or what can we do to make you at least not hate us or whatever the case might be, you know? What Just do you to make them to come back again at least and, like, have a yeah. second chance. Like, damn, maybe we did mess up the first time because, you know, we're not all perfect. Yeah. And so that they could keep coming back and stuff and change their minds. Would you say you're a perfectionist? I am. I need to have everything perfect or else I get mad. <laughs> I have, yeah, I need to have everything. I think my guys here understand everything. that. <laughs> yeah, because it's how you said. It's our name. It's our brand. But not even that. People are spending their hard work money. That's what I tell I tell a lot of my employees. I'm like, you know what? Um, there's new customers that never came here and they saw us on social media and they come and they get bad service or they get their food wrong. You think they want to come back? And this is the first time? I was like, no. Now they're going to go tell you, no, don't go there. I went and it was bad. Yeah. You know? So I, I tell the girls, make sure you guys try your best, you know, make it work. You know, if, solve, if there's an issue, solve it at, at the moment, make mm-hmm. it work so that the customer has to leave happy. All right. So what is the difference between being a worker 
from beginning, right, to now being the one running it, from being the worker to being the owner? What's the difference? Just more stress, and you 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 value more things because like something breaks, and before you you'd be like, oh, well, they're gonna pay for it though, yeah. you know, whatever. And now so uh, something breaks now, and it's like I'm gonna pay for that yeah. broken that you guys broke or what, something they guys broke or whatever, you know, or something's missing or whatever the case may be. Yeah. So it's more responsibility, more um, more weight on you, more weight on your shoulders. But it's manageable. You just gotta have the right mentality for it. Positive. I always just say positive. Even when shit's going bad, just keep thinking. You know what? At the end of the tunnel. It's it's gonna it's gonna pay off. Yeah, it going through those like today. It's it's a cloudy day, right? So it's just like the sun's always shining at the end of the tunnel, right? How you're saying, and you gotta go, but you go through a lot of stressful things, whether it's in business, whether it's in personal life, whether it's relationships, whatever it is. For you, what is one of your biggest stressors that you have to be able to manage or balance? So like, do you think? Better question: Is there a balance? Can you have a, a balanced life? You could, but it's hard. For example, like me and my family, the way me and my sister work, and my mom, um, we work every almost every day, Monday through Sunday, ten to sixteen hours a day. You know, there's times where we've been two, three months, and me and my mom don't take days off because we have to be there, just working, working. So then, what does that leave us with? No time to spend with ourselves. So then, we get home from work already late, and we don't want something. Like, I don't want to go out, or we don't want to go anything. Just go home, sleep, rest, and then the next day. Back to it. So it's a little sacrifice. It's, there's always a, a, something you have to sacrifice, you know. So for us right now, that the way we're working, it's maybe I don't spend. We don't spend a lot, a lot uh, as much time together as we wish we would, but. It's cool because either way, we're working every day. We see each other every day. You know, yeah. I see my mom. I take her flowers every day, Starbucks, food, whatever. So we're either we estamos conviviendo right there yeah. being together, you know. But what is when, when you, throughout your journey of being uh, the, the head household of this, what is one thing you had to sacrifice that not a lot of people may, may know or you haven't told anybody? I think it's a lot of spending. Everything would be that for me, spending a lot of time with, with other people. For example, on Monday is a holiday, right? Mm -hmm. Monday is, I don't know what Monday is, a holiday. Monday, Sunday, Monday. Well, where are you going to be at Monday? Working. Okay. Oh, it's different because you're, 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 you're an entrepreneur, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, anyone else, you ask, what are you doing Monday? Carne asada. What are you doing Monday? I'm going to go to Vegas. What are you doing? Oh, yeah. I'm going to go to Lake Havasu. Oh, yeah. Right, right now, we're going to leave to Vegas and we're going to be out. We'll come back till Tuesday. Yeah. So, what are you? They ask me, what are you doing on holidays? I'm working. What are you doing this day? I'm working. Yeah. I have a party. I'm like, I got to work. I can't really leave work just to go to your party and get shit faced. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it sounds fun. It sounds fun. <laughs> Don't ask me twice because you have me twice. I'm going I'm to I'm pull up. Fuck work. But. Yeah. But. Is sacrificing time something that you take take to heart or, like, you learn how to not really be in, emotionally attached to it? Because, you know, if you get emotionally attached to it, you can't function at 100% the way you, you are. I feel like as a friend, you don't understand. Mm -hmm. You know, like, if I can't make it, I can't make it. Don't press me like, oh, you're a dick for not coming to my daughter's birthday. I saw how slammed that was at work, like... I'll get off work and I'll still show up to parts like that in my working uniform. Like, hey, bro, like, look, I'm sorry I'm like this, but... I didn't want to miss out on your, yeah, you know, on your on your special day, you know. It's a it's it's things that a lot of people don't see, yeah. right? Like yeah. behind the scenes, they'll see us on camera. They'll see you at the business. Pull up, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, pull up after. It's like, yo, like I just had an eighteen hour day of work, or I'm not the best right now. Like then you ask them, what are you doing tomorrow? They're like, oh, I'm off tomorrow. <laughs> what am I doing tomorrow? I'm working tomorrow again. I gotta be back up. Yeah. It sacrifices, man, and and that's one thing that again. People have to at one point understand, but not a, at one point. I hope they understand, but when they come to understand, is that I hope you have something that you're passionate about that you're willing to give everything for, time, emotions, time away from friends, your life to give to this this fruit that you're gonna it's gonna grow, right? So, in order for mariscos to grow the way it has been the last seven years, you had to put in that work. Yeah. Monday to Monday, hours on end, your family on end, and yes, you have fun, but you may have missed these this person's birthday, this person celebration, or at the same time, maybe you weren't even at a hundred percent, but you still showed up. At one point throughout this this seven year mark, because seven year mark here again, the twenty five year old, you don't carry yourself as a twenty five year old. You carry yourself much older. Like if if they someone asks, how old are you? Oh, shit, this was probably thirty. The way he carries <laughs> we himself. We just talked about that too, man. Yeah, the way he carries the way he carries himself. But it's just the maturity, 
the maturity of knowing the responsibility, what it takes in order to grow, and what I know I need to do personally in order to achieve my goals. So do you ever have like a hard day when you just, yeah. I don't want. I'm going to tell you something. Everybody breaks. Everyone has a breaking point. You know, as, as strong as I try to be all the time and I don't let my friends or family see me when I'm at my lowest, like it's, there's a point, you know, where you get to and you're just like, I don't know what to do anymore. I just, everything just bubbles up, bottles up and you just like, do you continue? Do you not? You just sit there in a dark place and just think, 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 think. And it's hard to get out of there, you know? Yeah. Like once you get out of there, like, damn, like, you feel, like, so relieved. But it's it's really hard to get out of that, that spot. And then business owners, entrepreneurs, people that have something going on for themselves that they're putting the work, the sweat, the blood, the tears, whatever, yeah. um, they know what it's like to be in that in that spot, in that situation where you just feel like everything just went to shit. What's and it's just a, it's just and it's a whole it's just a mental breakdown. It's just in the moment out of nowhere. How'd you get yourself out of that? I just had to just mentally just calm down, just tell myself relax, take it easy. Like you, everyone tells me you're too hard on yourself. Like you're not. I'm just like I'm just I'm not comfortable. I want more. Yeah. Like no, just give yourself credit. Give yourself credit. You know, pat yourself on the shoulder. Like hey, you did good today. Like that's enough for today. Just relax. Tomorrow's another day. Yeah. No pasa nada. Yeah, it's you know? one of those things where. Uh, your small wins will stack up. So, but if you're not self-critical, like, if you're not hard on yourself, then who is, right? You may be working hard, but if 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 I'm the one that's going to let myself off the hook, then uh, today is cool. I don't need to show up today. You know, you're not being that determined in order to get there. Hey, I'm tired, but I need to stay up another two, three hours in order to get this product out. For tomorrow, I can worry about other things. And what it, what's that saying? If you quit now, you quit again. If you quit on one thing, you quit on the and second and, and third it thing. It becomes a, a pattern. A pattern. And then, you, and then you get comfortable with that. Yeah. So that's where we, then that's when businesses and people just start going fucking down. And that's surviving. Like, to be able to have, what's, what's one of the hardships that you figured out that having multiple locations? It's probably just trying to keep, trying to keep everything up to date and everything running the same. You know, because not everybody works the same, you know. As much as, just like I seen some some YouTuber said, he was opening up some chains of restaurants, and the first three, four were cool. But then people were demanding more all over the place. So when he started opening all over the place, he lost quality. He lost, um, the employees weren't, act, like, you can't you can keep up with so much shit. Yeah. You know, it's really hard to keep up <laughs> and maintain everything in multiple locations in different states, different cities. So... Because obviously, at the end of the day, you know, some people, staff or whatever, they, they do whatever they want. It's not their business. Yeah. They don't care. You know? There's some people, like, I'm saying everybody, mm -hmm. but there are some people that just don't care because they're just like, you know, they won't go yeah. the extra mile. They won't do something because it's not theirs. I heard it's it. understandable. It's true. It's, it's not your responsibility. I heard As it yesterday. Owner, you see that, and you, it's the little things that you see that they don't. No one will ever love your business, your product as much as you do because it's not theirs yeah and that's where i tell them i tell them look if this goes to shit i'm like we all go to shit <laughs> we're, no, we're all going together <laughs> if i lose this we all lose a job i'm like where are you gonna work you know we're all we're all, we're all fucked at the end of the day yeah so i need you guys to really you know put in put in that time and put in that love into the work as much as i do and back to what you said earlier if i don't show up because i'm hungover what are they gonna think oh he doesn't care he's hungover i can do it too i can do it too so i don't want i never want to give them that i'm not saying i go hungover to work guys but i'm just saying you know, don't give them a bad example. <laughs> even and they follow you on social media, so they see everything you do. So it's like, can't even. It's because everybody wants to be like that person on social media. The people that have a hundred thousand, five hundred thousand, a million followers. I want to live that exact lifestyle. But one thing that we all have in common is, come Monday, no matter how crazy the weekend was, Monday we're showing up, we're going to work, back back to the grind, no excuses. And that's the part, the no excuses part. One thing that my dad has always taught me is, tú puedes hacer cualquier desmadre que quieras el fin de semana, pero nunca falles a lo que tú debes de, de ir a hacer, work. I can get fucked up today for whatever reason, party with friends, but if tomorrow the episode has to be up at 7 in the morning, what do you think has to happen? I got to be up at 5 just to make sure everything is up. No one, no one understands that grind and that passion that one has, like, Bro, I love this shit way too much in order for me to give up. Yeah. No, no matter what you do, he does, he says, she says, I'm gonna show up because I need to do this. I need to, no matter if I'm okay or not. Like, I may not feel the best today, but 
I need to show up, not just for them, but for myself. Because if you don't show up for yourself, who the fuck is going to show up for you, right? Yeah. Are you emotionally in tune with yourself? I learned to get there. I used to not. I'm t- I used to be a very close person mentally, emotionally, because I don't yeah. like showing. I don't like showing people my when I'm down bad because I don't want no one to be like, damn, like he's doing bad. Like, feel sorry for me. Like, no, my my. I feel like my point is my my my. The, what I have to do is show people happy shit. Show people um, that there's positivity. That you know, not everything in this world is bad. Yeah. And I want to show them the positive side because why? Why don't want to bring someone down with me? You know, like I'd rather just show you guys the good side, the way you guys want to see. Because yeah. I, we don't need. I'm already sad or I'm already down. Why do we need three more people feeling, feeling bad for me, you know? Yeah, like, if you're sad, fuck it, just be sad again. No, fool, the world needs a yeah, happier yeah. person. Like, why you not? No, like, just, you know, do your do your thing, you know? It's okay, like, I'll, I'll get through it. There has to be a solution to the sadness, I think. When you're going to go to a friend, if I'm going to tell you a problem, as a friend, I'll hear you out, but I want to hear the you know, solution to this. a solution, though. You talking to somebody, like, at least me personally, if, if I tell you something that I've been having bottled up, and you just listen, that to me is already a solution because you already heard me. I let it out. That already took a lot of, mm. for it to come out. So the yeah. fact that you listened already, you already you did a lot already, you know? Yeah. There's not as much as, oh, um, finding after what to do after, but that's already like a relief, you know? So sometimes you just need someone to hear you, not say anything back. The, just, the, the, just hear. You the know? Just hear. Good. Because you don't feel, obviously you don't feel comfortable telling every um, certain people certain things, but some people you open up more, some people you open up less, whatever the case might be. Yeah, it's just being able to, to talk about whatever is going, going on, right? Yeah. Again, because since you already have a following, you already have a successful business, people out there want to be similar to you. They want to have a successful business. They want to be able to have the things you have, and they want to be able to carry themselves and the confidence the way you do. And that's the one thing that a lot of people forget is you. Every, you people are watching, whether they say it or not. People are always watching. Yeah. They don't but miss an episode. They don't miss. And they're just waiting for you to fall so they can capitalize on it. Or you have those silent uh, people that support you. Like, no, they don't have to say a word, but, hey, you always. See them. You, see them. you see them. Always rooting for you. Yeah. Um, confidence. Confidence is a big word in order to be in this type of a space. And not just in social media, but in life. You have to be a confident person, not just on camera, but off camera. Off camera. Because you're gonna meet people, you're gonna be seen around, and you're gonna be around people that depending on you to be confident. So, what what does the word confidence mean to you personally? You just gotta walk in that room as if you're the shit because you're you're going for a purpose. You know, you gotta you gotta set the tone. You know, don't belittle yourself. Don't think less of yourself. Go in there with a strong mentality, a good fucking mindset, and just do what you gotta do. And then they let the rest just flow. Have you? What's for you will always be for you. What is lo que es para ti siempre va a ser para ti. Yeah, hell. You know, <laughs> maybe not right now. Yeah. But like in the future, if it was meant for you. It's gonna. It's for you, bro. You gotta put in work. Yeah. You oh, can't. Obviously, yeah. You're not gonna <laughs> sit at home. Oh, I shouldn't have come right now. I'm gonna just chill. You, no, you, you can't gotta, wish upon a star. Like, hey, one day I'm gonna no. Well, yeah, one day, look but for that star, go chase that. Fucking yeah, star. you gotta go and get it, people. You have to work hard. You have to get up every day purposeful, motivated in order to get there. And even in the days you don't feel motivated, find the motivation. It's out there. Whether it's a person, whether it's a certain goal that you want to get to, it's out there. But it's how I've always said it. If you don't do it now, you'll never do it. Six months later, you're going to regret it that you didn't do it. Because the problem's not starting. The problem's maintaining. You know, you could you could start whatever business you want right now, tomorrow, yeah. but then keeping it and growing it. That's the that's the where the hard part comes in. You know, what, what was that? What was that one thing that you ran into when running this business? When three years ago, four years ago, twenty nineteen, it was a summer. I was in college. I was going to Eli because my mom wanted me to do college and my dad wanted me to work. So I was uh-huh. stuck right there. You know, like a lot of I'm pretty sure a lot of people are stuck where when their parents want them to work, they want them to study. And you're just like, do I make my mom happy or do I make my dad happy or do I make myself happy? Yeah. So they're stuck in that in that circle, you know. So my mom called me one day and tells me, hey, there's a restaurant I saw on Olympic and Central. You should go check it out. I got to school that day. I went, I talked to the guy. He let me in. I saw it. I walked out. I was like, yes, I want it. I already knew what I wanted to do with it. Yeah. So when I told her, I was like, look, if I'm going to get this bomb, I can't do school. She's like, no, you got to study, you got to do school. 
I was like, I can't do both. I'm like, I'm already running out of class to come to the restaurant on certain days. I'm like, I can't. It's either I do this or I don't. And she's like, well, just do whatever you think is best. So that summer, that July, I signed a contract. We did the lease, whatever. And he's like, all right, cool. You, you could get it in two months. So we started building, fixing up the spa how I wanted it. And then I didn't open when I wanted to in, like, December. So then they pushed it, like, another two months, whatever. So then two months later, then, again, no, we can't open it because of whatever um, permits, the city, yeah. something wasn't working, whatever. So then come March 2020, we opened, big grand opening. I sold 8,000 tacos on a Taco Tuesday. I had a line of like 100 people, three-hour wait. It was crazy. God damn. So then that was March 2020, March 5th when we opened. What happened a week later? COVID. Close. Close everything. I was like, no, I just opened everything. So then we had to close everything. And, you know, it was the struggles of no ma- the mask, the, the tables, the capacity. Bro, I was selling $50 a day, paying 5000 in rent. God. And I'm just like, damn, like, is this really going to happen to me? Am I going to feel like this bad where I just kind of like blew up in a way? Yeah. So, bro, there was all, probably all of 2020. The rest of it, I cried all of 2020 with that restaurant. And my mom said, like, just let it go. Just lose it. Who cares? Lose the deposit. Lose it all. Who cares? Like, you know, we'll do something else. I was like, hell no. I mean, I'm not going to lose my first restaurant. So, bro, that whole year, I wrote it, I wrote it, I wrote it, I wrote it, I wrote it. Until 2021, that's, it started kind of, like, fixing and stuff, everything coming back together. Yeah. I ended up signing exclusive with Uber. We ended up just popping off. And, look, we're here three years later. Every year anniversary, I sell over 5,000 tacos. I want to I highlight something because you said 20 – you literally were selling only $50 a day. Basically. You were having five, uh, $5,000 in rent. If you could share with us, how much did you reach a certain number in your bank account where you were just like, I probably had like what? sixty grand, like in three four months. Damn. So, and and before when you signed with Uber, when it started picking back up, what was what was that self dialogue that you were having throughout those tough months? Because again, how you I said, did, I you, always, I, I every day I'd go in there, I see the restaurant dead, and I'm like, it's okay, it's gonna be for one day, it's gonna be for one day. It's okay. It's gonna be full one day. Yeah. And I'll take pictures of that empty as restaurant. And I'm like, I'm gonna take another picture in a year or later when it's full. And so I wake up and you know what? It was worth it. And that's that motivation for the next thing. You know, if I did that, then I could do way more. Did Did you feel like quitting when your mom was telling you? I yeah, did it. She it, was, she was kind of like not pressuring me, but she was like, just fine. I like, just do fine. it. Just yeah. let it go. I like, just do it. That's it. Because who cares? You know, we'll do something else. You yeah. know. I'm like, hell no, we're not going we're gonna to keep this shit and we're going to make this shit go back up one way or another. Were you able to breathe when you signed that deal with Uber? Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, that was crazy. That The way, the way that, that Uber deal turned out was crazy. The way they looked for me, because I went through like 20 sales reps, because I didn't want to sign with them, because there was one thing or another that I didn't like. Yeah. And then they sent out a certain person, and she, she knew how to get to me. Like, they investigate you. They find out who you are, what you like, what you don't like. So, bro, she came up to me with the 1942 bottle. Right there. So where, where do I sign that <laughs> fucking contract? Um, don't even say a word. There's a yeah. sign right there. No, so it was a lot. She offered me a lot of good stuff that benefited my business. You know, we had a lot of we had a lot of good um good things in mind that I wanted to work with and grow. And then she helped me out a lot. Um, they gave me a shout out on the Super Bowl. I think the year of 2020. So a special shout out to Maris Cuatro Ventos and Uber Eats got that done. So I'm really happy with them. You know, shout out to them and the, all my Uber Eats marketing team. You. Your business, Marisos Cuatro Vientos, it's a staple in L.A., bro. Any, you ask anybody around, they say, my parents eat there. It's one of the best mariscos around. The shrimp tacos are one of the best. Is there, like, a daily thing that you do or that you tell your team of how to carry themselves and also represent the name? Always just smile, you know, smile, great attitude. Because we all, we all go to work, obviously, like you said, we all have our bad days or, you know, times where we're not okay. Yeah. So sometimes people come to work like that. Or we, I meet too, I go to work like that or in a bad mood or mad or sad or whatever. Yeah. And you just, you affect everybody, you know, because they see you and they're like, ah, oh, like, he's mad. Don't talk to him. Or he's whatever in his mood. Don't get near him. <laughs> and then they like, don't fuck up, don't do anything wrong because if you do, he's going to fucking just shit on you, you know. And yeah. then, ah, it's only pause and breaks. I'm just like. It's okay. Just pick it up. It's okay. We're not going to. And everyone's just, you <laughs> let me, know. Let me walk outside right now. Yeah. I'll be right back. 
But so <laughs> I there, always tell them, just always be happy, great attitude. You know, you guys are coming here to work. You guys are coming. You guys are here to make a customer feel, you welcome, know, happy, happy, welcome. So just positive attitude, smiles, and always be nice to people. Do you apply that to your daily life? Yeah, I'm always nice to everybody. I'm super nice. What's I that, think I am at least. What's that a uh, word? You got it. The way it's it's I've heard this in elementary. Treat others the way you always want to be treated. Right, so if I'm an asshole to somebody, I can't be mad that the next person treats me that same way, yeah. you know. And and one thing that I've we've gotten to learn throughout the year, and and more is just like yo, like maybe that person that is mad at you, the waitress, the sir, whatever, is having an attitude because maybe they're going through something, maybe they're having a bad day. And with me is that I like picking at people. Like I'll get a bad host or a bad ser- or a bad server. I'm like, why are you mad? <laughs> and then they'll they'll be like even more mad. I mean, why are you mad? Like, we're going to have a good time right now. Just relax, you know? And they just be like, this dumbass and shit. It's like, man, spinning that fool's feet yeah. right now. No, and then later, like, they, they come around, whatever, they get to know us. Because we're always, we're always, like, telling people, hey, what's up? You know, how long have you been working here? Yeah. You know, whatever. Trying to get to know them. Trying to build that little. So they can have a good day at work, you know, especially when they're having a bad day. Hey, you want to take a shot? I got you under the, under the table. Just take a shot. Buy your shot. And then <laughs> take a shot. And then the next thing you know, they're all happy, having a good day. You're like, hey, yeah. are you, so you guys doing good? All, that's all you did, had to do. Just run into someone with good energy, you know, and just bring that upon you, you know. Sh- like, share that with them, you know, so they could get all that bad shit out. Share the positivity, you know, man. You know? Like, if you waste your time being mad, throughout your, like, bro, you're just wasting your day. You're wasting, like... You ever know that guy that's always just mad for no reason? Like, you ever know someone in your life that just always mad? Like, why are you so mad? Sitting right there. He's sitting like, right why there. Why is he not smiling? You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I I do have I have friends that yeah, hey bro, man, fuck that fool. I want to get down there. Want to get down? I'm like, why are you just mad? Like, yeah. just just hug someone yeah. instead. Like, instead of fighting, you should just hug somebody. Exactly. Right, because. I'm, we're big on energy, bro, especially like in the room. Wherever we go, it, it really depends on how we're getting embraced. Like, I don't want someone to, to look at us or to look at me and just feel like I got to put up a front and, you know, size them up. Like, no, no, no. Not about that. Like, fool, well, you're better. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> that's bro, every time, Take it. Every time we're out and stuff and then, you know, someone at the club bar where someone pushes you or whatever and then, what's up, fool? I'm like, bro, you're, you're, cool. you're cool, bro. Just I'll walk away. Just hug me, fool. Yeah. Just, just come here. I'm like, hey, give him a shot. He needs a shot. He's pretty <laughs> mad. Give him a shot. He's having a bad day. Give him a shot. I told him, he put on my tail. Don't worry about it, that shit. It's about energy, bro. So can you, can you share with us, what does your circle look like, your tight circle? So it consists of my videographer, Jimmy Perez, right there. Shout my out. My security, he's right there outside waiting for us to open the door. <laughs> he's been outside for like an hour. Um... <laughs> Ah, there it is. There it is. (laughs) That's right. Where the fuck were you? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Viajó todos Los Angeles. For real, I took you to five. The homie here wanted the homie here wanted a buzz ball. That's why. Give him a buzz ball. (laughs) See, the beauty about being on podcast is doing shit live again. You can't. For us, it's like you can never fake the funk. We we are who we are. At the end of the day, we are who we are. Love us, hate us, and that's it. You can't please everybody. That's another thing. You can't keep everybody happy. I learned that. I learned and I learned that the hard way because I want to keep everybody happy. But then you try so much, and there's that one person that you just can't get to. So you know what? Fuck you, then. You know, be miserable, or whatever. That's why, like, how, that reason why I bring up bring up your circle is because I'm made up of my team. The people that surround me in my life are the ones that keep me going and keep me on check. Tell me the harsh truth when I need to hear it but are also there when I'm not feeling the best and they don't judge me for who I am. Like, they literally are there to... Supportive. Support me. You have to have a... Supportive. A, a supportive team. circle, a supportive, whatever that looks like, whether it's just your parents, whether it's your family, friends, girlfriend, boyfriend, whoever, your circle is a representation, res, representation of you. Of you, of who you are. Of who you are. If they love you, they want the best for you. If they just want to use you, they'll take everything away from you, yeah. right? You have X amount of dollars. Oh, I'm only there for the good parts. For but the when partying. You're not f- the party. The party. But when you're not feeling the 100%, oh, bro, I'm too busy. Hey, can you help me move some shit? Oh, I can't. Mm. Like we were popping bottles yesterday. You can me, can't come and move a fridge. Like, you know, that's some fucked up shit. Smallest things. And that's why, like, I tell people, bro, like, be mindful of who you're with and who, where you're around and what the conversation looks like. 
Because if we can have a, a conversation about being better, planning something for the future, and all we're doing is just talking about partying on the weekends, you're not the type of person I want to be around. Yeah. Because what... I'm sure your parents have told you, like, dime con quien estás, dime quien eres. Oh, your mom's like that. Mom's like, he's a fake friend. He's fake. He's fake. He's real. He's fake. He's real. Like, nah, nah, just nah, nah mom, no, nah. no, it's not that. That's not true. That's not true. <laughs> Down the line, you're right. Yeah, they fell off, and that's one thing we. Hey, we on, on tantos amigos, on tan, on tan, a ver, on tan, <laughs> háblales, háblales. I blocked them. What am I gonna call them? What the hell? <laughs> when and it's one of those things too. Where it's like before how you said. Trying to keep everybody happy. And when you try to keep everybody happy, you tend to lose yourself along that way, that journey, where you're just like, everybody else is happy around me, but why the fuck am why, I miserable? Yeah, like, why, why, did I not have, why, why am I not having fun? Yeah, I have everything. I have, I have the health. I have my family. I got my friends. I get, I get to enjoy myself. Why the, what's missing? Yeah. And it's like, damn. Can I have this conversation with them? Can I, can I call you up at one in the morning and be like, yo, I don't feel the best today. Or, hey, can we go have, have lunch, brunch? For a cruise, just go chill and talk. Yeah, you know? literally, like, be mindful of where you're going with these people. and where you, I can't have a heart-to-heart conversation with you at 11 p.m. at the club with a banda sonando. <laughs> ¿Qué dijiste? No soy ni madre. No soy ni madre. Nah, fool, don't cry. Fool, you're why, why do people want to network and talk the most like at, at those things, bro? I always have someone in my ear like, hey, compa, I know who you are. I do, I sell this, this, and that. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, taking a shot. And I'm like, yeah, compa, let's link up. I'm like, yeah, I got you. My chickies, come get this guy and give him my number or something or my card. And we'll talk about it tomorrow, bro. I'm trying to have a good time today. Bro, it's... <laughs> I, I swear, shit like that be fucking happening. It, bro, like if if the conversation is as important, we can have this tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a time and place for everything. We are outside because we want to enjoy ourselves, enjoy our, enjoy ourselves with our team and our our loved ones. I'm not here to talk about business, right? Like we'll talk about business outside the club before the whole thing, or be like before dinner, or whatever. Yeah. Or unless we have a one on one type of dinner, then yeah, we can talk then about we can it. Talk business. But one in the morning. Nothing. But well, Amanda playing, I don't think so. I don't think so. If DJ playing Perreo don't know my, don't, <laughs> hey, this is not working, dog. Yeah. But to the whole, back to the whole thing of having a supportive system. You're talking about your photographer, your security guard. What what else is this consistent? My, mom, my sister always 100 percent supportive and being there, and pushing me to like go do it, go go go. You know, my dad always giving me. I was criticizing me, um, analyzing me, giving me advice, like, hey, why did you do this? Like, what, what made you do that? That What you think was going to happen? So yeah. and we talked like that. I was just with them, like, a month ago. We were talking. We were at a restaurant eating. And then I told him that about the new restaurant that I want to do, whatever. So he takes out a napkin and starts drawing on it with a pen. Like, no, put the fridge right here, the fire right here. He drew out the whole layout of the restaurant. And I recorded him. I'm like, what is wrong with you, bro? Like, <laughs> You know, how do you just come up with all that shit in your head right now with us just talking like this? All right, so that's a great topic to bring up. What kind of relationship do you have with your dad that's away from the business? We're very, um, we're close, but we're not close. And then when we have to be close, we are close. And then we're not, we're just, we're just cool. We, we grew that relationship where we're not just dad and, and son. Now we're like, we're homies, you know, we help each other out. You know, we, we keep each other advice now. You know, I'm at a point in my life where I tell him, hey, you know what? That's not good, or you shouldn't be doing that, or think about it. You know, and then he listens to me. So it's, it says a lot, you know, that, that he actually takes my word into consideration. That means a lot to me. When did that change? Probably when he saw my potential and what I could do. Because at first I felt like that. I like, ah, like, he's cool, but... He, he, no, I want yeah, that. Yeah. Not a lot of faith. He, he has some faith, but, like, not to where I'm at. I think now he's just like, damn, you're crazy. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm, I'm you. Can, <laughs> you <know>? can, <laughs> can, can you remember the first time you had that heart-to-heart conversation with your dad? Heart-to-heart? Probably, dude, my dad used to make me cry at the restaurant, telling me how to do stuff. Like, I would fuck up. and be like, no, not like that. You're not fucking see like this. And he'll move me and he'll do it. Like this, not that hard. In front of everybody. And I'd just be like... <laughs> No, try doing it. No, not like that. And I'm just like, oh, that shit would tore me up, bro. And I, I cry, bro. And I just, I hold in my tears. And then that's when, and I see, I would see other people laugh sometimes, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, hell no, man. No one's gonna tell me how to do this shit. I'm gonna learn how to do this shit, and then I'm gonna show everybody how to do this. So then that's what kind of like pushed me to 
Drive. And that's when he saw he matured and he said, okay, now he got it. So now we'll go to the restaurant and be like, hey, Eric, him and him, they're out, get in there. Boom, I'll get in there and I'll fuck shit up. And he'll be like, see, you could do it. You just need that. I, it's because I think back to like our dads and I think everybody here can relate to like as much as our dads are hard on us, they just want us to be the better version of them. Yeah. Whatever that takes, whoever that looks, they may, it may look like an asshole. It may look like heartless. It may look like I don't give a shit about you. But in reality is if you ask them, I just wanted you to be better than me. I just wanted you to learn more than me. Yeah. You know, be more advanced than what I was. Right. And sometimes, like, us growing up, we're like, damn, I feel like my dad I didn't care about my sentimentals. Yeah. He didn't care about how I felt. Now it's like, this is all I wanted, for you to be able to stand on your own, on yourself, to be able to lead the team, lead the family, lead the household. And if you had to hate me along the way, so be it. So be it. But now we can have the conversation of being business partners, being friends, being homies, yeah. apart from being a... That and son. I think that's what I needed growing up, you know? Because my dad was always busy. He's always working, always doing his shit. So that did that affect you? That's a yeah, good point I mean, right there. Yeah, because bro, Mexican was, dads, bro, when they start in a business or know, even trying to keep up with the I, household. I used to call my dad, like, hey, um, pick me up from school, from middle school, whatever. You know, holler back. You know, like, I can't. I'll send someone. I can't. I'm busy. I'm working. Mm-hmm. I'm like, damn, bro, all they wanted was for you to pick me up one day, just... You come pick me up, you know, yeah. not, not, not not employee, not staff, not your driver. Like, you come pick me up and you, you know, take me home. That's what I wanted. I would walk home every day from school, bro. Throughout my high school, uh, up to senior year, I would still walk home from school. Was that something you were missing then? Your dad being present? Probably. I mean, he was there, don't get me wrong, he was there financially and all that. No, 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 but away but from that. So The thing is that, the know, thing is that uh, as a, well, me, as, like, as a man and stuff, like, you need your dad, bro. Like, obviously, I love my mom to death. She's done everything for me. Like, I'll give my life for her. But, like, as a guy, you kind of need your dad, you know, to, to to guide you and to show you. And when he's not there for you, that's just hard, you know. But you never forget that your mom was always there for you. Yeah. You, you nah, there. definitely. Our moms are queens, man. And how you said, you if we can give them the world and more, so, so be it. Yeah, you know, if I got to lose a arm or a leg just for them, so be it. But I think to, to your point, too, talking about dads is – it sounds, it's going to sound like, people got to imagine this, like you need those rough hands wrapped around you and just tell you, hey, it's okay, I got yeah, you. exactly. That, that's it, just that, that little simple gesture was made, uh, made up for a lot, you know? Have you had that with, with your dad? Yeah, now, now we have. Now I, now I break him, like now it's the other <laughs> way around, shit, <laughs> you know? Do you remember the, the first time and the last time you, your dad, you and your dad hugged? That you're just like, instead no, of now, just like a quick hug? Now, now I always talk about my kiss. I'm always. So, not, you know, not just a, when we say bye to our dads now when everything's cool, it's just a quick little hug, bye, I'll see you later, love yeah. you. But do you remember the last time when you hugged your dad and you just held on? I remember the, uh, when I saw him for the first time after three years of not seeing him, he didn't know I was, I was there. We were at a bar and he, was, he walked in saying what's up to everybody. And he saw me, and he kept saying what's up to everybody, and he broke, but he still kept his cool. And when he got to me, he just bawled out. And I'm just like, fuck. He broke me, so I bawled out too, and we just hugged and hugged. Everybody just staring at us. Like a room like this, people just staring at us, just hugging. And then he was just like, he was bawling out and shit. He's like, oh, I missed you. You know, I love you, whatever. Like, you're so fucking, you're the the shit. Stuff like that, you know. Three years? Yeah, I went like three years without seeing him. God damn. So there's... There was a, can you say there was things to be healed throughout that time? Yeah. There was a lot of hurt, I guess, a lot of unexplained things, you know, conversations that need to be talked, whatever, to get to where we're at now. So good thing we had all that, so now we're we're good, you know. So how can you encourage the person that is feeling a certain way, for, uh, not just a dad, but a parent? That says you got to remember that they gave you life, bro. They don't have vida. Without them, you, I think that you wouldn't be here. You know, so as much as you, I want to say, hate them or have resentimiento or, you know, they, they hurt you or done stuff to you, at the end of the day, they give you, your dad's going to be your dad no matter what. Your mom's going to be your mom no matter what. No one's ever going to change that. Nobody. You have to accept it. They're your parents. Maybe, yeah. you know, there's, there's been some cases where the parents do some fucked up shit and it's, it's on, it's on um, forgivable or whatever, you know, that's different cases. But, you know, being, being, I feel like if your dad wasn't there for you and now things could change and you can make it better because, look, Carato, your dad's not there for you and what? You know? 
Now you're gonna have that other resentimiento that you never talked to your dad because over because he wasn't there for you. You were young, but you grew up and you matured, and now you're like, you know what? Hey, you weren't there for me, but I'm gonna be there for you, homie. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna do for my kids and for you what you couldn't do for me. So you can see what's up. Oh, man, I think that that's the topic. The what you said right now. Los quedamos con otro tipo de resentimiento because we didn't solve it. It's a it's a crazy world, right? So it, life is always short. One day you're here, one, the next day you're not. Unfortunately, that's the way things are. We never understand why. But what's the one thing everybody does as soon as someone gets lost? I wish I would have done it. I wish I would have told them. You know what's uh, something I was thinking about? I saw I saw a post. I don't know where, but it said like, "Would you go back to your to your past to fix it to change something?" No, no, you wouldn't. So look for the future. Why don't you become a better person now? For, for the future, so that in the future, you're not saying, fuck, I should have done something different in the past. You get me? So, like, why, why are you going to mortificarte and be like, fuck, I should have I been nice to my parents in the past. Yeah. When in the future, right now, at this present day, you know, I'm going to become a better person. So that yeah. in 10 years from now, I'm not regretting this shit again. Yeah, that's why I posted that story yesterday on my, per- on my personal page. And it was just like, yo, if, you're, if your mind is telling you not to do this, not to go out, stay home, do this instead... Yo, listen to listen your mind, to your body, mind. body, and soul. Yeah. You know, your mind is telling you something that, you know, it needs. But because you want to please everybody and be over there, oh, you know, I'm going to miss out on this. I'm going to miss out on something. Bro, what if that day is a, sets you it's even more day. back? It's a bad day. You know, you never know when someone else is having a bad day. Now you're just, you're the repercussion of their bad day. And what, you get what involved. What they say is true, though. I've seen some other stuff online that said, like, if you're already in bed, just stay in bed. Don't go anywhere. Like, Hey, let's go out. Let's go party. If you're in bed already, just stay there. Why are you gonna go? Yeah. Risk, you know, whatever the hell, drunk driver or like you said, someone's in a bad day or whatever. Yeah. You know, and you're already home, safe, good. Like the party's not going anywhere. My mom said, "La banda, la fiesta, they're not going anywhere." See. Sí. You go COVID, se fueron y valió madre. So hell, no, I'm not trusting shit. She said no more. We yeah. stop partying for a while. Nah, but everybody still figure out yeah. when to party. Hey, come to the backyard for having a backyard buggy. The underground shit in <laughs> COVID. Yeah. I didn't go to that. My friends told me, though. My This was told me about that shit. Yeah, I didn't mean either. My other friends were out there yeah. doing their stuff. I was home. I was home. I was, I was home. wholesome, bro. Telling them, wholesome. go home, bro. Don't be out. <laughs> hey, bro, I see you right there. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, to that, what we were just saying right now, too, is life is always short. So whatever hate, whatever resentment that you have with anybody, yo, it's up to you to fix it because you can't depend on nobody else to fix that for you. And you'll keep eating you up and just you gotta you gotta fix it not for them but for you for yourself for, for yourself your own, for your own self. Heal yourself because if you're not a hundred percent, then who's gonna make you a hundred percent? If you have a resentimiento, if you have something that's just killing you inside because someone made you feel that way or someone did this to you, yo, forgive them. And I know that's a big thing as men to forgive somebody else, but. No, do it for you, dog. Like, yeah. you got to be okay with yourself. And when you see that person, what it, as men, I'm sure everybody at one point was like, hey, when I see that fool, it's on site. It's on, I'm ready. My security. <laughs> <laughs> He's right there, too. Oh, you it, too? Feisty. <laughs> it's one of those things, right? It's like, oh, when I see him, it's on site. It's like, Wait, why are you going to hold on to that anger? For What if you see this for 10 years later and you still have that anger, so you put that energy there? No, what if you need something from him later on? You know, what if it's someone that, you know, like I said, there's always that bigger person. There's always that bigger fish, that bigger, someone better than you. Yeah. So what if later that becomes someone that you needed something from, you know, and then what? The resentimiento, what are you going to do now? Yeah. You know? How there, you gonna- there's, a, there's a difference between just losing everything at one time and then having something to lose. That person over there may have nothing to lose, and he doesn't give a shit. He'll go and fuck you up. He'll try. But if you get into it, and you have all these assets tied to you, oh, I'm going to go after what he has, yeah. right? So there's a, there's a time and place to be out, too, right? Our parents, again, tell us, no vayas. No andes allá por esos rumbos. Amor, te puede, te puede ir pasar mal. Algo. Te puede pasar algo. And then you're out at two. Ya llegaste. Yeah. I'm like, damn, like. Yeah, I'm home. Like, okay, cool. But what about the next week when something happens? Are you hearing on the news of this person getting stabbed or shot being at this party? It's like, yo, damn, like we were just out there too. Like we've we've been like like we've been in scenarios where we didn't go out one week 
And that week, something just Some happened. That shit just I'm like, down. Yeah, maybe it's, good it's thing, a good thing. Good thing we stood in. Yeah. So, did you have to go through like a phase two of? Yeah. Obviously, there's been times where. Yeah. Let's talk know, about you, phases. Let's talk. So, I, I see the shoes. You know, people see you out. You live your life. You treat yourself because you worked hard. What has there been? What was that phase and transition of when you started earning money to now having money and knowing that you have almost everything to lose? Now, you, like you said, you see everything different. You think about it twice. Like, damn, am I really gonna like, like, um, make the problem bigger or whatever? And then you gotta think like, damn, if shit goes down, then one, it's a waste of time having to deal with some like someone you fight with or whatever you 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 altercation whatever. Later on, you know then. Depending who you are, lawyers get involved and police, and it becomes a headache and it becomes a waste of time. And then one thing I don't have a time, I, I have shit to do, so I'm not gonna be wasting my time fighting over with some lame that talking shit just because of being a hater, yeah. you know. But then I got to a point where like, oh damn, like we're we're doing good, or whatever. I'm gonna make sure my parents are doing good, you know, they're comfortable. And then I always said, oh, whatever is like a little bit of what's left, and then that's for us to enjoy, you know. But everything else goes back in, invest, put it back in, you know. How do you how do you go about investing? Properties. Business, um, commercial businesses, um, other houses, random house, stuff like that. I'm going to say what everybody's thinking right now, not just, maybe not not here, but like listening. At 25, how the fuck do you have this mentality of investing? Because that's, that you. Got, it's because you got to, I went to school some of it, so I learned a little bit in school. And then I have a lot of friends that are older and they have their shit together. Like I have friends that have crazy amount of money. And I always ask them, how do you do it? Or what are you doing? Or how are you doing it? And they go, oh, look, I'm doing this. I have this portfolio. I have that portfolio, that portfolio. And then get a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And then you start investigating yourself, connecting yourself. And, oh, shit, you know what? This does work. You know, this just give me profit. This just give me cash cash flow money, whatever. It brings in a little bit extra. So you just start going from there. You're preparing for the future. Yeah. Like right now we got um my YouTube channel coming up. That's something I always wanted to do, but I never found, like, the courage. Or, like, I was always, like, shy or whatever. Yeah. Because I was on there to show people, like, damn, like, this is fun. I want to show you guys the working side, the partying side, the struggling side. So you guys can see that it's not just what people post, you know. It's all fun and games and cool and whatever. You know, it's also, like, there's stuff behind the scenes that goes on that you guys, I'm pretty sure you guys want to see that happens, you know. Everybody wants to see what goes on behind the money. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. yeah. So, I mean, the, the part about reinvesting, how big is investing in yourself? Like, what does that mean to you? I think that goes in physically, mentally, and emotionally. You know, you got to, like, like we said, talk to people, you know, try to work out, eat healthy, because all that affects you, too, sleep. It, I'm saying because it affects me. I'm going through all that <laughs> shit right now where I don't sleep, I don't eat good, and it, it affects, you know, it, it, one way or another, it yeah. harms you. So you got to learn to to do all of that, you know, be be good with yourself, feel good about yourself, feel positive, and, like, always be confident. Like, you're the shit, you know, you you are who you are. There's no one like you at the end of the day. There's nobody like you. So make something out of that shit. Yeah, you, what's that? What do we always say? You, you can be duplicated but never replicated. My tacos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, like everybody. Sorry, you can always be imitated. Like people always try to be like you and have the same product, do the same food as you. But to have a second you, a second version of you. That's another reason why it doesn't work that way. You want to do mm -hmm. something that someone else is doing because you see they're doing good. Why don't you do something that no one else is doing? And then you pop off, and then you do it big. But you want to go and copy someone just because they're doing good? Like, it does not work that way. You can copy people, but you got to add your own twist to it. Yeah, bro, there's people that I've seen them online, and they used to work for me, and they left, which is cool. You know, do your thing. I don't mind. Power to And then you. I check on Facebook, and they took my whole menu. Like, they're my pictures. I'm like, bro, use your own pictures at least. You know, it's <laughs> cool, but just use your own pictures. You know, my hand comes out in that picture, you know, like, what the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, and still at that point, I still don't tell them anything, bro. I just think, you know what, just do you. Like, it's porque you know, no, shit, you no, know? no hay necesidad. There's no need, right? Like, lo que, se, lo que se sabe no se tiene que decir. Well, you know, you don't need to say People it. People always ask me, who are the best mariscos? I mean, you tell me. I'm my best. I'm the best. But you tell me, what do you like? Yeah. Or you go try them, try five spots, and then come back, try mine, and you tell me what you think. I'm open. You don't like my shit. It's cool. Yeah. But don't say, oh, that shit tastes like shit because it doesn't. You know, you could tell me you don't like it. There's stuff I don't like. I don't like ketchup. I hate ketchup, you know? Uh, even on chicken nuggets? Ketchup is nasty. But I love tomato, though. Like, if you give me a tomato, I put Someone salt. Someone cut off the cameras. What the <laughs> hell going on? If you give me a tomato, so, I put you... salt and I'll bite it like that. Like, I eat tomato like that, but not ketchup. I don't like ketchup. You're weird, dude. <laughs> you see? <laughs> well, let, 
No ketchup? No. Even like on the ranch mariscos? Ranch ranch? Oh, fuck. Fuck that shit up, huh? I, I lick ranch off someone's feet. A girl, not a guy. I don't know what you're saying. Yo! I didn't want to be able to say something. Someone let me take off his shoes. What the fuck are you doing, bro? Ranch is fire, bro. Ranch is top tier. <laughs> fuck ketchup, though. <laughs> what, is it, what is it? Cause is it is it one of the things about like on the cocktails and stuff, like they put ketchup? So I like tomato juice on it, not ketchup. I know it's the same thing. It's still tomato process, whatever. But I just don't. I don't like how it smells. The texture. No, the ketchup smells weird, bro. Mustard you too. Smell ketchup? Yeah, it smells weird. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of stuff I don't like, and I'm I'm a picky eater, bro. But there's stuff, you know. So you have one of the top mariscos places here. In the LA area, everybody knows you guys. You say mariscos, mariscos cuatro vientos pops up. Outside of your own restaurant, your own business, what are your top three marisco spots? I don't have a top three because I don't go eat mariscos all the time. Else. Not all the time because I'm always eating it at my spot. So I eat it every day I work. I eat, yeah. I eat it every day, you know, because I got to try stuff. I got to make new stuff. So I'm always eating it. But I like sushi loco. I go to sushi loco here and there. You know, get a little tostadita, cayo de hacha, or whatever, or stuff that I don't have on my menu that they sell. And then another spot that I like is in Ensenada. Ensenada because that's where my mom is from. And that's where I was born here in L.A. And then I left to Ensenada with my mom, and I lived there for five years. And I came back at six. That's when I started school and everything here. So in Ensenada, we have a spot we used to go to called Marisco Salo Bravo. Bravo? And then that's my favorite Marisco. I think he's, some of his stuff is better than mine. I love that shit. It's fire. If we have a chance to go out to Ensenada, it's bravo. Sure, we, we, go to San Diego next week. we go to San Diego next week? Right now? Go. After the podcast? Oh, after. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. So, you grew up your first five, five six years in Ensenada. Ensenada with my mom, because my mom had a business over there, and that's when my dad had the carreta here. So, my dad would go every weekend to see me to Ensenada. Wait, wait, wait. You're tripping us out now. You're tripping me out. So, remember, we started with the carreta, right? Correct. My your dad, dad started in the carreta. Correct. So, that's where my mom met my dad. But at that time, my mom had a, she had a business in Mexico, in Ensenada. So, your mom is a business owner, too? My mom started working at eight years old, too. <sighs> she was the, the one that took care of their household with, with, with her three sisters and her brother. So, you, as everybody says, like, you're a product of, of your parents, right? Your parents are business owners. So, you go, yeah. the alley -oop. Yep. So, what, 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 what did your mom have a business over there? So, they had, a, like, alborotes, the store. Like, they sell everything, carne, verdura. Okay. Um, like, the, the Mexican stores, that sell everything. Mm -hmm. Before, there were supermarkets in Mexico, in that, in that pueblo, in Tenada. Yeah. Before, there was a Soriana or a, it's like a Calimex or whatever, but smaller, you know, family-owned stuff. So, my mom would do that. And my dad would go visit me every weekend, whatever. So then when I came back over here, that's when um, everything else went into play, where they got one lonchera, then got one restaurant. But by that time, my mom was already a fan of his food. They were already going now, whatever. They met right there. She would go buy food from him. So your mom fell in love with your dad because of the food. From, some, some, from, uh, from when there were nothing, and she's been with it the whole, the whole along the way, you know. She helped, she helped create it, too. Because some of the menu items are from her side, from Ensenada, like the tacos baja. Uh -huh. yeah, that's her recipe. So do you... Your restaurant is made out of not just LA, your dad, but also because Ensenada and Jalisco are the like back roots of it. And what's that word? Like you get inspiration from other places. Yeah. When you hear the word inspiration, what do you think of? What's the first thing you think of? Um, I think other people that are doing a lot of bigger things than me. So that I've never seen anybody. With a nicer car, nicer clothes, nicer watch, and be like, damn, fuck that fool. I've always been like, damn, I want that fucking watch. I want that car. Yeah, I, no, no, me sale. I can't. Honestly, I can't hate. I can't. I just. La envidia. I can't. And I can't do it. Like, I see other people. I'm like, bro, how'd you get that watch? You know, what do you have to do to get a fucking watch like that? Or a car or a fucking $10 million house. Oh, yeah. do this, do that. Damn, I, I need that. I want it. I wanted to hear that. I needed that little motivation. You know? No. So now that you're. I mean, you're doing it again. Top, top of the game. You have multiple locations. You're, you have a team around you. You have staff that depend on you. Your parents that are, you know, how you said, taking care of your sister. What do you need that you don't have right now? Time to do more stuff. I, mean, I wish there was more time in the day to get more stuff done. But it's, what's your end goal? What do you mean? Like everybody has an end goal. That, oh, end goal? Yeah, end goal. I want to be worldwide. 
you know. Like my mom, we, we, I went to my school recently with my mom, and then she's all like, oh, when I'm older, you're going to push me in the witcher, you know, through the airport. I'm like, mom, when you're older, I'm going to have a fucking private jet. We're not going to be fucking flying commercial. Shit. <laughs> you know, that's how I'm working, you know, like, to for stuff like this. I'm like, later, we're not, we're not be struggling. I want a jet, you know. I want a fucking helicopter. I'm going to Idle Mexico no more. Dog. Yeah, I don't know. Fuck more ladies, you know. <laughs> no more ladies. Yeah, we're, not, we're flying My private. knees are fucking hitting the chair in front I'm 6'3". I don't fit in the fucking plane, bro. <laughs> they don't understand this. Yeah, and I'm there with my leg out, and then someone trips. Like, bro, you don't see my longest legs yeah, sticking out the aisle. Like, when we get the tickets, they're like... It's a uh, fifty or twenty dollars more for the aisle. I want the aisle because yeah. I need one leg. The whole aisle too. Huh? Give me the whole aisle. I'm gonna lay down in that bitch. <laughs> I don't understand that dog. No, or the it's... the exits. You gotta sit at the exits because no one's oh, in yeah. front of the you. The wings, the front, or the, or that's it. You're 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 fucked right there. Has, has there been as much as this is motivational, inspirational, and also healing? People see the lifestyle that you have. People that know you know that, you know, you you treat yourself. Thanks to one of your homies, the question was popping out of, what's one of your highlights of being outside with, with your friends? Like, yeah, what's one of the highlights that, that you may have? Or what's a fun thing that you do that's outside of the mariscos? I think we were just out just vibing. We were out, we could out, be at a restaurant having fun, you know, Falta can recognize us. Oh shit, you're that one fool, whatever. Oh yeah, what's up? You know, shot, drink, whatever. And then it becomes that we do this madre in that little circle. And then, and then he'll post about it. He'll tell other people. And other people, hey, we saw you with my cousin. Oh, you were with that one guy. So then people start talking about me, like saying good stuff, positive stuff about me. So that's something that like I really look forward to on a daily basis, you know? What's your top three thank you? What is, what's your favorite drink? Uh, Don Julio 70, to start. To start? To start. How are we finishing? With Ace of Spade. <laughs> All sloppy. <laughs> All sloppy and sticky with all wet and shit. Not even. Did you guys see that video on, on TikTok? Uh, I think it was in Miami. That in order to flex, they were just dumping out all the bottles. All the bottles. You see, that's that's crazy. I would just like go under there and like just take all the yeah. That shit, pour that shit. If I can recombine, like we're trying to round up the pennies to get one bottle. Imagine to jump. No, no, no. Yeah. Eso no se puede. Güey. No, I love. You know what? I started drinking in Bucanas or how do you Bucanas? How do you know how to pronounce? Bucanan. I, I know more. Bucanan. Bucanan. Bucana. Bucana. <laughs> I started drinking that at 15 and I had a really bad pedo with it, like a really, really bad pedo. Like I was going to die. Like that day when I got home, my mom called my dad like, hey, your son's right there tirado on the floor. And my dad's like, what the fuck's wrong with you? And then it's all your fault. It's all your fault. <laughs> Crying and shit, you know. So then, bro, the next day I threw up for like three days. And after that, I can't even smell. I can't smell whiskey. I don't like whiskey. And then people offer me whiskey all the time at a bar. Like, hey, take a shot. What is it? Bucana. I was like, ah, oh, like, I don't like it. And then what do I get? Pinche presumido. Pinche creído. You don't like whiskey because it's cheap. Or you don't like bucanas because it's... No, bro, I just... No me entra. No, I have I'm good like, taste. I'll, I'll buy tequila for us, you know. I'll drink any tequila. It's a Patron. Patron is disgusting. <laughs> and don't give me Patron. If you're drinking a Patron, that says a lot about you. No, yeah. <laughs> you just want That green one? Oh, bro. Oh, the orange one? Oh, hell no. That's, we're going to have a segment of what... Drinking what drink says says, says about, about you? you? Yeah. yeah. But Chon just means you want to wild out and black out. I love I love tequila. I love some vodka and then champagne. Just no whiskey. I struggle with whiskey. We have a love hate relationship. Yeah. Look at that guy. Look at that guy. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Yeah. No, because I drink. I I drink it, but I just. Just no, I'm gonna fuck shit up. I'm gonna flip everything upside down. Now I drink that shit. <laughs> No, they're they're one of those that when they take shots, they turn around and pretend they're gonna throw up. They're like, <laughs> but but they don't want to throw up. The tequila. Go get it. It's in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> we came prepared. <laughs> but <laughs> see, <laughs> let's go back to the business, guys. Back to the business. Back to what we came for. Yeah, business. right. Everybody has highlights. And everybody has moments when they're out with their friends of like, hey, we kind of like made it. What was your I made it moment if you've had one just yet? You ever seen that picture or that video where a lot of people post where it's all the homies and they all put their watch in and they say one has a nice ass watch? Uh-huh. Where I'm, at one point I was like, damn, we all have a nice ass watch, you know? So like I'm surrounded with people that, you know, made it one way or another. So I'm like, damn, like. I used to be the kid that used to watch people do that. Like, damn, everyone's in the circle with their watch. I'm like, damn, I don't even have a, I don't even have a watch, you know, to get in there for the yeah. picture. Now so stuff, stuff, stuff like that, you know, we all pull up in the in our cars or whatever. Like, it's, it's just a, 
It's like a trophy. To me, it's a, all this material shit is trophies. You know, it's just something that you work towards, you get, and it's a trophy. You got it. You know, it's there. You work for it. Besides that house, what was the first thing you bought yourself when you made a little lump of money? I think my car. When I bought my car, that was crazy because I went during my lunch break to go pick it up. I called, I called Cheekies. I'm like, hey, meet me at the Carson dealer right there at, at Nissan. Uh-huh. The fuck you getting an Altima? I was like, yeah, something like that. <laughs> so we pulled up. I already had done everything over the phone. We pulled up, signed right here, boom, boom. We signed. They brought out the car, and they were like, what the fuck? I got a GTR. So I was getting that shit, put out the trailer, unwrapped, and just my sketches. I was supposed to, you know, that wakate. <laughs> and then people were like, what do you do, bro? I'm like, no estás viendo to pinche sucio la Shit, I got a GTR too, Midnight Club Dub Edition. You know, I was able to. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> so probably the car, because I was, bro, as a little kid, I was like, damn, one day I'm going to have a GTR, one day I'm going to have a nice car, one day, you know, one day, one day, and then. One day turned out to be that day. That turned out to be March 2023. What, like six, what are we, five, six months ago? Yeah. That's when I bought the car. That's when I thought, I was like, damn, that's crazy. And I still walk out and see my car, but like, that's crazy. Wait, but was bit. Just a couple months ago. Yeah. What the? Okay. You see, the, this is where the, one of the important, one of the questions I had right now, too, is you being 25, does that sometimes get overlooked or judged? Like, does it become a, a point of being judged because you're so young? And doing all this? Other people have told me, like, oh, or let's say other business people meet me or whatever. And how old is he, 25? Oh, no, like, he's he's too young. Like, he don't know what he's doing. So I get turned down, you know, without even getting a chance to show them what I am, what I do and stuff. You know, like, oh, 25, oh, no. Like, he's he don't yeah. got the experience, the capacity to do it. So I get, I've been turned down. How do you how do you handle being rejected? Your loss. Remember, you gotta you gotta set the tone. You gotta act like you know you're somebody. Yeah. You know, and then once they lose you, and then later someone else gets you, and then they see, and they're like, "Oh, now what's the homie? Now you gotta now pay you gotta ver, a ver, suelta. You know, like now what's in it for me now? Because now you want me. Yeah. You didn't want me back then when I approached you because you thought I was a nobody, and now that you saw that I'm a somebody, now you want to work. Yeah. But now I'm gonna need a little extra. Like, what's good? It's one of those things too, right? Like, it's uh, I was talking to my boy Jose earlier in the week when you get rejected. You know, I take it personal. It shouldn't be, but I take it personal because why am I not there at that point, whatever the case is? But once I'm there, and you reject me or you say no to whatever, mm, you're going to find out who I am. Yeah. And it's not a personal, like, I want to make, I want to show you is I'm going to show myself that I'm a value. Yeah. I know what I bring to the table. Well, you got, exactly. I know what I bring. So when, I mean, this applies to relationships, friendships, love everything relationships, life. everything, life. You lose me right now because you think this. Okay, cool. Later on, you're going you're gonna to see why. Yeah, see. You, you're going to see what you lost, right? Like, it's one of those things where I was telling them uh, during the week, it's like, if I want you to work with me, it's not because of what you have, but it's what you bring to the table. Your ideas, your mentality, your grind. That's what we need. That's what we want around us. Not just of, hey, you look good and you look good. No, no, no. Hey, what's your grind look like? What can you offer to the team? We need assets, not liabilities. Exactly. You know, like I want people that are gonna. It's a it's a potluck, right? So I want people that when we do a potluck, everybody brings their own dish that they made, not someone that just brings their plate to take the food and take yeah. it home, and take it to go. No, no, no. Eat todavía, with todavía pa llevar, todo huh? pa llevar. They're gonna eat there and then pa llevar. No, no, no. I want you to. Um, I think he has said it before. Like, um, we've we've talked about this many times because as as a team, I'm, I'm sure you understand. You go through growing pains. So the same people I'm broke with and we're suffering and we're sharing little plates are the same motherfuckers that I'm going to fucking enjoy a steak dinner with because yeah. we all did it together. You know, everybody wins as a team. Everybody loses as a team. I started to tell my boy, my boy Cheekies, I'm like, because I think he comes and helps me with work. You know, he likes to be right there. He likes all that stuff. So whenever we do that events, like at the night market, he, he'll go with me. He'll work with me. Every time how to do like little stuff. So he knows what's what's good, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, hey, what's up? How's is cracking? It's 10 p.m. Like, bro, we got to go drive back to Maywood, wash the lonchera, take out everything. He's like, fuck, we got to do all that shit. I was like, bro, this is shit I do and my employees do. On the, you know, whenever we yeah. do shit like this, like, fuck. Yeah, ahí vamos. And know? it's an important thing. he learns. Thing. You know, he's like, damn, like, this food's not just part This food's fucking, you know, till 2, 3 in the morning. And she still drive back home again. And it's an important thing that, 
you know, being being the boss, being the the head the head honcho, like that he's also not scared to get his hands, his shoes dirty because he has to work. Yeah. It's like, yo, like, if I'm making you do something, it's because I know I'm doing it and I've done it. I've done it. That's what I tell the guys at work. I'm like, hey, you got to do it like that. And they look at me like, I'm like, bro, I'm like, I used to do that. I used to do that 10 years ago. I'm like, I'm telling you because I've done it already. I know how it works. Just because yeah. you're older, you think you know more than me, I'm like, you don't. You know, I've been doing this far longer. Yeah. You know, and I learned the hard way, so. It's because people see the product, the byproduct. Yeah. But people. Vinci, vinci morro, mocoso, la verga. <laughs> yeah, people see us now, but we've been doing the work weeks ago, months ago, years ago, and we may be working hours that when you're sleeping, we're up still working. Working every, yeah. You know? Work don't stop. Today we go to sleep at one, 1 in the morning, but we're up at 5 in the morning ready for the next day. But even then when you're home, are you trying to sleep? What are you doing? You're still fucking working. You're Thinking, still, bro, you're like, still fucking te- I'm texting the team or texting the, hey, bro, like, look at this. Hey, what do uh, we think about different. this? I'm sending TikToks. Hey, bro, look at this shit. She's fucking funny. At 3 in the morning, sending <laughs> TikToks to the homies and shit. <laughs> And they're like, go to sleep, Eric. I'm like, I'm not sleepy. Laugh at this shit. It's just funny, you know? No, like, literally, like, like me and Dylan, we've caught, like, instead of going home at 12 a.m., one in the, we're going to the gym. Let's go to the gym and just work on us. And then there, like, we'll talk about whatever or, like, sending the... Yeah, he's mas. It's you know? mas. And one, one of the things is, again, how we talked about earlier, know where you, who you're with and where you're at and when you're working on yourself. Yeah. Because when you're working on yourself may not be ideal to everybody else. Sometimes they don't want our... Sometimes our self development happens past twelve a.m. Yeah, one in the morning, because that's when everything is silent, no one's around us, and the only thing, the only thing, and only person sitting with us is us. And now in our mind, and now we got to sit there and be like, all right, how can I be better? Like they how- say, piensa con la mente fría. Like think, think with a cold mind. You no, know, think fríamente. You know, be cold, and then then think process. Yeah. Not never heated, and then no, always cold. Like you know, cool, calm, and collective. You know, if you're going to, what, what, like, my mom was just telling me, this piensa antes de, de reaccionar. And, like, I, I keep reminding my like, mom, every time I make an action, I know my repercussion. I know whatever I tell you right now, whatever I say right now, I don't regret it because I said it already. I know what's coming out of my mouth, and I know the effect that it may have, whether it, it's a positive or negative way. We won't get canceled, right? No. All right, cool, because I seen the way they cancel people online. That shit fucking sucks ass. No. <laughs> Our, my thing and that's our a, thing... That's another problem, bro. In social media, you can't even... You, you. Our thing here is, if... Si tu te crees chingón, eres chingón. Yeah. If I think I'm a bad motherfucker, I'm a bad but motherfucker. It is what like, it is. I have, I have some friends, they play in a grupo, and they're always saying, oh, we're the best in LA. Of course they're going to say that, because they think they're the best in LA, because that's who they are. That's their brand. And people will hear, like, oh, you're not the best. I always say you're the best, because we think we're the best. Mm. But how are you going to get mad over someone that thinks they're the best at what they do? You yeah. get me? So people are so fucking close-minded. JJ has said it. JJ Soria, shout out to him. He's like, I think I'm the shit. I know I'm the shit. I hope one day you feel the same way about yourself the way I feel about me. Yeah, exactly. Whatever that looks like, maybe my confidence comes out of cocky, but I hope one day you're as confident as I am so you can say the same shit about exactly. you. Exactly. Again, the only per- when you look in the mirror, who's there? You. You. Do you like that person? I hope so. And if you, you don't. like that person or else you're going to be happy. Yeah. Or if you don't, how the fuck? Then change it. Fix it. Fix it. Don't don't put that negativity onto somebody else because they're happy and doing better. One thing that a lot of people nowadays in age, and it's it's tough for people to hear, but they have to understand it. And once they hear it, they have to understand it is you cannot be mad at the person next to you or in front of you that's doing better than you. You don't know what they had to go through. You didn't know what they have to endure, what they had to live through. Maybe their parents weren't around. Maybe they're a foster child. Maybe they had to go through something traumatic in life, but they're there. Yeah. Now you have to wonder about yourself. Why aren't you either next to them or in front of them? It's not my time yet. Cool. Well, I'm working on it. So maybe how you said, you passed up on me right now. Cool. But later on, later. you'll find out who it's we like are. That, bro. It's like that. People just hate hearing the truth. Like, at the end of the day, like, I'm, we're 100% with us. We're 100% on who we are. Si no te gusta, cool. I'm not for you. Just no te han de comer, no te quitan el sueño. So, like. No me afecta. You know, you know what I mean? Like, unless you're, like, I guess, unless you're in my close circle, unless you're, like, uh, what did we put the other day? Opinions matter only if the person that said it mattered. I have a better one that I posted that people liked. Oh, shit. Here we go. Cuando tu opinión me quite lo prieto, I'll listen to you. 
So unless what you're saying will make me whiter, because I'm not being quemado, then I don't give a fuck what you say, my boy. Yeah, bro, that's that's exactly what it is, bro. Like people take it at heart. Like if I tell you right now I don't like you, I I think you're a fool of Chickies. it. <laughs> you say you don't like me. Who? 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 He was like, I'm ready. <laughs> He has a six pack food. That's what you don't have. Right there. <laughs> the missing tostada is food. Thank you. <laughs> um, it's one of those things, right? Like people get too. How we said it? You just said it right now. People are, people are too sensitive. They're too sensitive to what other people's opinions are. How old are you? Sorry, how old are you? I'm 27. I'm pretty sure we grew up almost the same. Like growing up with our parents, how they were hard on us, beat us, talk shit to us. You talk shit to a kid now for recording you. That's it. You're done. That's it. <laughs> it's a a CPS yeah. coming your way. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you know, so everybody's time, coming after you. Yeah, so time, time's changing. and that's what people don't understand. Like you can't even you can even be yourself because there's always that one offended person. Mm -hmm. That's why in my videos I said it, it's entertainment purposes only. Don't take anything I say serious. It's to make you guys laugh. For you guys to come back and watch something where you guys, damn, I'm having a bad day, but I'm gonna watch this video because I know that. I'm going to get a smile out of you or yeah. make you laugh. Or that's the whole purpose of what I'm doing. You know, I want to bring joyful shit to people, make yeah. people laugh, motivate them. Get something out of what I do. Get something good out of it and make something good with your life or with you got going on. Facts. Or use my connections that I'm sharing with you that I know. And you build with them or you connect with them because I don't mind. Like, I don't, I don't hide my connections or my people. My team, like, That's important. hey, you need someone? I know someone that could do that shit for you. You need someone? I, I know someone that could do that shit for you. Oh, why are you fucking, why are you burning out, like, all the spots? Bro, what do you mean? You, we're helping each other so, out. So you don't gatekeep? Oh, no. You want to you know a spot to go eat, party, drink, whatever? I know it's all the good spots. And I share that with all my followers, with all my people. So how, you know? wh why, what makes you do that? Because you know how some people, like, nah, bro, I want them to figure it out. They because at the end of the day, like, let's say it's a restaurant. And they say, I like it and I'm supporting it, then I want them to do good. So if I send more people, what do they do? What am I doing for them? I'm making them do good. And what do they say? Oh, Cuatro Ventos recommended me. And then they reach out, hey, bro, they, look, I won't go that far. Um, probably, it was, it's been a while since I did this, but I just started posting up my favorite food spots. Local, not, not, not big chain restaurants, like a wing yeah. spot, um, burgers home, home that I like. like all home, home businesses that they have. Yeah. So there's this wing spot that I shared. Um, the wing spa official, I think that's his name. I forgot his name on Instagram. Mm -hmm. But um, I shared them and I put, hey, check out these wings. They're fucking fire. And low key, I've never been there. And but they look fucking fire. <laughs> and I know that guy puts a lot of hard work and dedication to his shit because I watch his stories every day. So I know he's a little puestecito over there on Beverly on like third working every fucking day. And his shit looks fucking fire. Just that he only posts up the days where I'm working and I'm busy. So I haven't gone. I haven't gone. But I'm going to go. Yeah. Oh, we must walk go. So we go try it. That way, that way, like what I talk about now, will be like, oh fuck, he was right. They are good because I feel like they are good. So that way, yeah. we could just take that out of the way. That's so I shared him. I shared him. Hey, check him out. Follow him. Yeah. The next day, he sent me. Um, he sent me thirty dollars, a gift card for Starbucks. He's like, oh, hey, my boy, good morning. Just wanna thank you for yesterday sharing me. I was like, oh no, man, I did it. I did it for for free. Say like, you gave me two hundred followers. And I'm like, damn. And then that's how I'm like, oh fuck, I have that power. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm gonna use it for good. You know, I'm gonna I'm support. I'm gonna support other people. You it's know, because look, <clears throat> when you start doing things that are good, people want again. How we said earlier, people want to follow that same criteria, same resume. So wherever you eat, you go party, you go drink, whatever it is. I want to live that same lifestyle. I want to. I want to feel like I'm living in that same life. You know, there's more to it, but yeah. you know, social media has power. Yeah, good and bad. It's just whatever you put out there, you better be okay with it. With the outcome. That shit, that shit's coming back. Like, um, what it, your skeletons, right? If right now I post something, forget about it. A year later, you, you blow up and they, they come back. They get back up. And eat the I remember, I think it was around during COVID. There was this, I saw a post about this little kid that was selling flowers with his dad, Ancillor Chavez. Uh -huh. His name is Edgar, the little kid. And... He went viral because someone posted him, and he was walking around selling flowers to people on Cesar Chavez, right there by the King Taco, in front of the King Taco, oh, on Cesar Chavez and and um, Soto. So then I saw the little kid was, I think, like nine years old, ten, and his dad was just selling flowers. That's all they did for a living. So the backstory is that they're from Guatemala, I think, and they're just there working, like living day to day. 
So someone recorded them and he went viral. So when I saw that, I went up, I went to look for him and I told him, hey, you know, I want to help you out because my uncle, which is my dad, my mom's brother, he lost my grandma at the same age he did. And he misses his mom. He talks a lot about his mom on videos out of nowhere. So I'm like, I want to do something nice for the kid. I told the dad and the other person that was helping him, um, Wendy, I told her, hey, you know, I'm, I'm Cuatro Vientos. I want to help out the kid because she was the one that was helping him to begin with the gold fund me and all that stuff. So long story short, um, they agreed to me help him. I took him to Target. I'm like, get whatever you want. He filled up a card. I filled up a card of food because all he did was get toys. So yeah. I went and filled up two cards of, of food for him and his family, and he filled up a whole card of toys. So we went back to his house, and we unloaded everything and stuff. And I'm just like, you know, I, I did that for a little kid because I know that my uncle struggled and suffered a lot losing his mom and not having his mom at that age. Yeah. So I'm like, if I could put my grain of sand and help out that little kid and make his dad's life, flip it around maybe like for a week or so because I know it, you could only keep someone happy for so long. Mm-hmm. If I could be able to do that for somebody, then I'm going to fucking go ahead and do it. And that shit went viral. So when they went viral, the, people started saying, oh, he's wearing that watch because he, he kept the GoFundMe money. Because <laughs> since, since the dad wasn't a U.S. citizen, they were struggling to give him the money. Because we, we were supposed to raise 12000 We raised like eighty. So they couldn't give him the money because of the citizenship. So people started commenting, oh, that designer shit he's wearing, he stole the money. Yeah. And I was like, the fuck like the thing about so again how we're talking about social media for everybody that is struggling right now to start social media because they hate to be judged is listen to this there's always going to be someone out there that's going to say something negative because they don't want to see you do good they don't want to see you make an impact or change people's lives they're they're miserable with themselves they're not happy you know so they want to but if i'm not happy then no one's gonna be fucking happy you know i want to i'm gonna shut this down because I don't want that person to be ahead. And I, it's always one of those things where we say, like, people shut other people down because they wish they could be doing the same exact thing or doing better, or they're mad because they came from the same position, yet they're just not there. They're, they're in, yeah, we they're come in. from the same, the same age, the same hoods, everything, but I'm going to be mad because you made it and I didn't. You can't think that way because if you put negative thoughts out there, you get negative shit, yeah. negative repercussions. Exactly. Hey, I'm glad he's doing that. I'm glad they're doing that. I'm glad this. My time will come, but I got to do my work. And once the time comes, then it's on, right? It's like uh, Jim Jones said, like, maybe right now when we're broke. We can't. There's no Versace. There's no. But once it's on. We on. We on. Everybody on. Yeah. It's been it's been a great conversation. It's, it's, <laughs> it's been a great conversation, bro. From beginning, uh, the food. First time I actually... Having the marisco. What you think? Like, bush it aside, like nothing, you know. We'll no feelings we'll attached. Friends, like, I no, we'll still be friends after this. You sure? Lock them chickies. <laughs> straight, nah, up, straight, honest, up, straight up, straight honest, up, straight up. I, don't, I, I love the criticism. I love it. You can tell me what you didn't like so that way I know, you know. 10 out of 10 for me. I love the shrimp tacos. I love right now the red aguachiles. That's good, huh? Oh, that shit was fire, dog. The sauce that you have, that you brought... I think everybody here, va a llevar para lonchear, para pa comer. Para desayunar mañana. Para desayunar. Ahorita le están hablando a sus viejas que trajeron lunch. Unos taquitos. <laughs> Unos taquitos. But amazing. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate amazing. That. And, Appreciate and thank you for, for bringing, bringing us food and sponsoring us with food, man. Um, um, it's nothing about that. I, just, I want you guys to try it because I know you guys, I'm like, oh, probably they, they've heard of it, but they haven't tried it. I'm, you know, I'm, so I, want you, I want you guys to get first day, first hands on it. So you guys tell me, you know what? Uh, this, this, and then it's like so. It's cool. I love that. I love seeing you. Seeing you guys eat the food, just for me was. You know, I was. Appreciate I'm, I'm that. Sure with that. You ask anybody, they know who Mariscos Cuatro Vientos is. Whether it's them personally, their parents, a family member, and uncle Sancha Sancho. They know. They know. Bro, I have a video. <laughs> I have a video. Well, I don't want to say I have a video because I'm gonna get I'm gonna get my ass <laughs> later. But five years ago. 9.30 a.m. We open at 9. There's a couple eating. This girl pulls up to the front of the dining room, and she's on the phone, and then she calls a guy. And I'm assuming she asks him, where the fuck are you? And he says, I'm at work. And she goes, no, the fuck you're not. And she runs up to the girl and starts beating her ass. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. And then my waitress gets in trying to separate them. The guy gets in. They separate them. So then the Sancha, I'm assuming, walks out first. And then the, the boyfriend and the girl are, are fighting inside the dining room. Yeah. So then the girl runs out, catches the Sancha in the parking, and beats her ass again. <laughs> so after she beats her ass again, 
the guy still lives with the Sancha and the girl chases him in the car and they leave. 9.30 in the morning, bro, on a random <laughs> Tuesday. Did it leave with mariscos? <laughs> Look, the, the, the mariscos, they paid for. The potassos were free. She paid for all that shit, you know, because she got her ass beat. Bro, that shit was sad. Now you know. Morning's nine. Don't go to nine. with your Sancha because you'll get <laughs> you'll caught get, up in you'll that get shit. you get caught. <laughs> Again, that's, that's the problem. Mariscos are free, potassos. No, mariscos paid for. Mar- potassos are free. Potassos are mariscos are not cobrar. <laughs> Whatever you want, bro. All right, so... To end this, bro, and and the reason why we're going to transition into this conversation here is because, again, we humanize people. People see the success. People see the possessions. People see the business succeeding. But at the end of the day, you're still a 25-year-old human, 25-year-old entrepreneur, son of two hardworking parents, older brother to a younger sister, right? We're normalizing this. You're not a... You're a special individual because it does take a special individual to have everything that you have and do what you do. This is not just an overnight success. This is how long that you've been in the business? Me, me when I when I started my show from beginning, not just from not just taking like over thirty years. It's it's not it's not just overnight success. People think it's an overnight success. What is when you're Talking like even your younger sister, what does being an older brother now mean to you also? How do you look at that? It's hard because I feel like I'm very hard on my sister, you know, but I, I always tell her like it's for your own good because I need you to be strong. So sometimes I break you, but like just know that I just to to endure you, to make you to make you stronger, you know, don't take it the bad way. I'm like, because my friends are hard on me. I'm like, we were soft on you. Like we were hella soft on you. So I just know that whenever I tell you shit, it's because it's for your own good. It's not because I want to be a dick brother or be a dick to you. No, I'm why, doing it. Why do you want her to be strong? Because I want her to survive and fucking make it, you know? And she has to have that mentality right now that she's fucking 22, 23. Because it's, you know, like, at, this is where you got to, like, make them. You know, make them and grow them into someone someone, someone bigger later. You know, that you got to be hard on them now that yeah. they're young so they fucking learn. I mean, that's the way I learned, and it worked out for me, so. It worked out for me? Too bad it doesn't work out for her. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> You know, but it's one of those things where you could talk from experience. It's, it's, I think it all depends how you grew up. You know, mm-hmm. we all grew up different. We all, our parents' race is different. It wasn't so a it's silver just, platter. Yeah, it's, so it just, uh, it all depends what what your family is is used to or what how they, they, they grew up, you know. That's the that's way we grew up. You know, we, 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 we work at a young age and then we enjoy later. You know, we sacrifice and we enjoy later. Trabajar we put in the y- time and then we enjoy later. But... Primero lo que deja, después lo que pendeja. Oh, Así dice el corrido. That's right. And for me coming out soon, los nuevos chavos, we got a new corrido coming out. For los nuevos chavos, and the song, the song says that for a reason. Primero lo que deja, y después lo que pendeja. So first we do work, and then let's go party after. You can't celebrate if you have nothing to celebrate for. You know? You can find, party. Find, yeah, yeah, find exactly. a reason to celebrate. Yeah, yeah. Find a reason to celebrate. That's the thing. You can go out. Cool. But for well, what? Why, why are you partying? Yeah. Why are you popping bottles? What are you why, celebrating? What, what did you do that was so amazing? Yeah. Oh, uh, you survived the week? Okay, cool. There's 365 days. Yeah. Come on, dog. What did you do in order to celebrate, right? To my next question, because now we're going to break down the, the, the walls of technically your family. You're a family-oriented man, right? You're the older brother. You just said right now you, you're this way because you want your sister to make it. What does your mom mean to you? Because I feel like your mom went through a lot of stuff that you guys together had to go through, and she was that rock, that rock for you. It was hard. We had a lot of bumps along the way, but it was a lot of arguments, bumps, you know, but it was all worth it because it is true what they say. Like, your mom's always right about everything, bro. Like, everything that she's pointed out that I've done wrong or that she's pointed out about the future – She's been right. And then she's always says, I've been through this shit. You know, I, I, I lived through this. I know I know what's going on with you. You know, and it's very hard because you want to do a lot, but then, you know, she's like, hey, this, hey, that, whatever the case might be. But she's everything to me, bro. I, everything I do is for her. You know, every day I wake up, I'm like, everything that I know is going to pay off at the end because I'm going I'm to make sure that they're happy, comfortable, and living their best life. What does she mean to you? The world. I'll stop everything right now for her. Damn. Love. 
it's what it's, that's what we call unconditional love. You know, no matter what happens in the world. Who was there for my my graduation? All my shit. She was, you know, she was the one always there cheering me on. You know, and since we go out and I take her out with me. Hey, let's go to the club. She's like, yeah, I'm down. Go to Hollows, <laughs> Malecon, whatever. Yeah. And she's there, and then, and then I know sometimes she she sees me doing my shit, and she's right there just recording me, like you know, she's smiling, happy, like. And I know half of it's like, este pinche borracho pendejo, <laughs> and then the other half is are like, you know, that's my fucking son right there doing all this shit. So. So what is your what does the happiness to your mom mean to you then? Everything, like everything I do is for her and for my sister and for my dad. Like I'm, I'm here because I'm here for them and because of them. That's my purpose. I feel like that's my purpose in life, to give them everything. That's why I'm here, and that's why God gave me everything I have today. You figure? When did you figure out your purpose? When I took over. Because I, I, I'm telling you, that wasn't my dream. I want to go to school. I want to be a detective. Yeah, you wanted you a know? whole different career. When I started working and learning that shit, then that's when I'm like, you know what? This is what I love. This is what. I... And then we go back to my mom started taking. Um, Classes for business because she wants to learn more. That shows a lot about my mom. My mom's a Hispanic Latina woman that she don't know English. So this day she'll talk to you English all broken. She don't know English, you know. Yeah. And um, she's trying to take some courses because she says I want to learn more. I want to understand more taxes, more all this shit that you do. Like I want to understand it. So I started taking some classes. I started helping her with the work, whatever. And they asked her, she like, does your son love what he do? And then my mom's like, that's a good question. I never asked them. So that day she came home and she asked me, she's like, do you love what you do? I was like, I love what I do. She's like, are you sure? I was like, yeah. I'm like, you think, you think I'm going to wake up and go to the restaurant not wanting to do that shit? Like, no, I do shit because, man, I say I love it. You know, like, it's, I want to do this. Like, I want to grow more. I want to build out of this. I want to be big out of this. Like, yeah. I love this shit. I wouldn't do this shit if I didn't like it. She, I just want to be sure that you're doing something you love. So then the fact that she's still... Ask me, like, are you happy and shit? Like, you know, that's why I always give everything back to her. Yeah, I love that. Now, <laughs> here it comes, dog. It's, uh, the, re- the reason why is because we're made because of our parents. Whether it was a good childhood or bad childhood, we are the way we are because of what we had to go through growing up. 25 years old, 27 years old. We go through. We went through a similar stage, right? With our parents, did what they could with what they had. They taught us. They were with. They were a certain way with us because that's all they knew. They didn't think it was bad. They didn't think too much of the repercussions. They just knew I was setting you up for a better tomorrow. Yeah. You mentioned a lot earlier um, at the beginning of this that you saw your dad at a bar three years later, and you guys just cried. Throughout those three years. And even now, was there something you you wished you could have told your dad that you never told him? Yeah, what I told him that day when we talked, like, just that no me salia, you know, because as a guy, like I said, when someone's not there for you, like, it takes a lot of courage and balls to fucking open up to somebody that you look up to so much, you know? So it's, well, like, it's just that one person that, like, you want to tell them all this stuff, but you just, no te sale, you just, you, you, you can't, like, it's in you, you just can't say it, though, like. You, you, you want to scream it out and tell them, but oh, you just, I mean, at least me, I just couldn't at that what, time. What was that thing that you wish you could have told them? That I wish it was part of me, that like, that we're going to make it big, to just hang on, to just chill, you know, that I got it, you know, have faith in me. There it is. <laughs> Work doesn't <laughs> stop. Do you wish you, you would have told them at that moment so you can get a response? No. Everything happens for a reason. So if I didn't tell him then, it's because he didn't need to hear it then. And I told him when I told him, it's because that's when he needed to hear it. And everything worked out. There's a, one thing that I believe in very heavily when we go through the shit as men is we are the way we are because we need to be this person in order to function at 110%. We are... Hard motherfuckers in our business, in our craft, because we need to. But there's always that, I would want to say, there's always that little person behind us that we wish we would have heard something from somebody. What is that one thing you wish you could have heard from somebody to tell you that you needed to hear throughout your life, through your 25 years of life? I'm part of you, you're doing good, and you're going to become great. Because I hardly ever hear that. So that's what I want to do a lot more. So someone fucking tells me that shit. 
Are you proud of yourself? No, I am. Should be. Because without you doing what you have done the last couple of years, then who would have done it? So, you know what I mean? You have to be proud. Hey, Kanye say. What did Kanye say? <laughs> Everybody asked what happened if I didn't win. I guess we'll never guess know. We'll never fucking know. <laughs> exactly. Message here, dog. And one of the things is, and the reason why I wanted to say that and bring it up, and I'm I'm thankful that you shared it, is if you don't hear from nobody else, tell yourself you're proud. I was I was gonna get to that. You know, if if you don't see no one's around, then talk to yourself. You know, connect with yourself. Yeah. You know, figure it out within yourself what needs to be fixed. Yeah, you may not you may not hear it enough. You may not be told enough by your family, your friends, your loved ones, whoever it is. But you got to tell yourself, I'm proud. You're doing good. You're doing good. You know, Show yourself that little piece of grace. You know, right? The, I, we love using uh, that word, grace. Yo, you're here because we're going to show him grace by a power above. Whatever you believe in, whatever you think, it's the highest power. He showed you grace. That's why we have what we have because we know at the day tomorrow, this shit could be taken um, away. Yeah. He could take everything away if he wanted to. But show yourself grace. You're You're successful. You have health, you have loved ones around you, and you're supporting a lot of people that, you know, people look up to you. Um, and th- I know this is where we we always get everybody to is, what's that quote that you resent with that you could tell a younger uh, 15-year-old you? Damn, that's crazy. Um, live your life, bro. Honestly, just... Live it because, like you said, one day you're here, not another day you're not. So just do what makes you happy, what makes people around you happy, and just grow with that. And just be happy because tomorrow they're gone, you're gone, and all for what? What did you do with your life? You didn't even stay me. You didn't, you know. So do something for yourself and for them so that when you're not there or they're not there, like, you know what? But that person was that person did it this, did it that. You know, just yeah. make that put that put your own grain of sand. It's not a lot, but look, it's a fu- it's it's a start. It's a, yeah. how do you how do you start something somewhere? You know, gotta fucking do yeah, something start somewhere. So just you know, enjoy your life, live your life, and just do your shit for yourself and for your family. Would you tell the fifteen year old you? What would you tell them? They're gonna be great in life. Just work and don't give up. Don't give up. It's hard. Don't give up. Just push through that shit. Sweat, tears, blood, but just don't give up. Just keep. There was a, a study I saw with the coin toss. It's a 50 50 a coin. The same chances you have of going 10 times tails if you go heads is the same times if you go the other way around. Like you're going to have the same outcome. You get me? It's the same possibility at the end of the day. If you would have heard that at 15 years old, would you believe yourself? Or you believe. Would you I believe? Think it who told me. Even like one of my dumb friends, I'm like, bro, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, we're not making out of this shit. Like, <laughs> but it been like someone that someone that bit that came up to me and told me. But I, you know what I did though? I had I had teachers that would tell me like, hey, Eric, um, you're you're a special kid. Like, you're gonna be big in life. And those teachers I still talk to. They still go to the restaurant and look for me. My fourth grade teacher, Renato Avalos, he still goes for me. My eleventh grade English teacher, um, Raul Mata, he still goes and looks for me. My French teacher in 10th grade, Marta Vargas, she still goes and looks for me. And they see me and they're like, we knew that you you had something in you. You weren't the best kid <laughs> or the smartest, but there was something about you that, that we liked. And we all, and all my teachers discussed always the same shit about me. There's something about him, like he just annoying doesn't shut the fuck up, but like, there's something about that kid, you know? Because that was always the topic with my parent conference, he didn't shut the fuck up. Yeah. Only did good in speech class because that's where I wouldn't shut the fuck up. <laughs> Debates, you know, shit like that. Then that's where I would go ham. Oh, you think you're going to win? Yeah, uh, hell no, shit. You know, I'll get the last word yeah. of this shit. Hell that's yeah. one thing. I'm a sore loser, bro. I don't know how to lose. I like to win. You know, that's a, it's a bad thing, too. But I'm super competitive. So one of those things. If we lose, we're going to analyze why the fuck we lost. Yeah. So we don't got to go through the same again. shit yeah. again. Yeah. That's why the last time we played a tournament with Chris... I analyzed why we lost that tournament, but it was because someone wasn't there to help us out. And, um, you know, that's never going to happen again. You know, that 
That's never going to happen again. So Just we call, me, like, call me. We always win on this side. <laughs> <laughs> it's because, bro, not playing a game in, like, years or, like, dying out of breath. What did you guys do? No, we played a soccer tournament, 5v5. Oh, no, my man is. He leveled the bloody nose. It was that type of game. Yeah. Sore losers. There were some sore losers out there yeah. that they thought the old-timers didn't have it. And <laughs> we showed up and we showed out. That's right. Mariscos Cuatro Vientos, bro. You got to check it out. You got to go make your own opinion. You guys go try it. And then you guys tell me. You guys like it? Cool. You guys don't want to tell me that, too. You know, I don't like this. I don't like that. And then, you know, we know we'll, we'll go from there, you know. And I don't care. I mean, not that I don't care, but <laughs> it is what it is. If you don't like my shit, you don't like my shit. If you like my shit, you fuck with my shit, I fuck with you. And you know what? We're going to take it to the top. And don't be, don't gatekeep. Make sure you, when someone asks you, what's your favorite Marisco's place? Tell them. Tell, tell them, them your grandma loves shrimp tacos. It's cool. And you the know? best ones in LA, yeah. too. Don't gatekeep it. Yeah. Maybe you could take the Sancha there. Maybe you could take I the I Sancha I'm going to record it. I'll turn off the cameras <laughs> for you so that we don't have to record that. You put it on TikTok. And Make sure you pay later. your bill. The potassium will be free if free. you need them. Those are, you know. <laughs> but, Eric, I appreciate hey, you heavily, you, bro, for, for, you, for sharing you. your thank story. You. you and your team. Thank you, man. Sharing your story. Sharing where this originated from, how it stays on top, and how you stay on top, and how you stay motivated. Um, I hope this inspires people around there. I hope it inspires the young. You inspired me a lot. I, I, I took a lot of shit. You asked me a lot of stuff. You know, we did with your people. Thank you. And then I'm going to grow from that, and I appreciate every everyone and each one of you. Think right about here. this. Maybe the person that's trying to start a Marisco spot is watching right now I to know. take notes. Start that shit, bro. The problem isn't starting. Remember, the problem isn't starting. The problem is fucking keeping it up. But start that shit. Start that shit. El sol se para todos. Just don't copy my menu. <laughs> don't your fucking menu. <laughs> but just trust me. You can do a lot of with this shit. Trust me. It's endless possibilities. Hell yeah. Toast Live Podcast. Baby, the most authentic, most organic. Let's go. Oh.